All right, so I'm gonna talk about some EQing real quick. Um, I got a track right here uploaded. Um, it's a new beat. Called, I called it a little something. I'll make it real quick. So um, somebody asked me about EQing as far as boom back beats. I mean, what I'm about to go through real quick. You can use it on this technique. You can use on any genre. It's really just creating space for each instrument to shine through in the mix. All right. EQ on Fruity Loops onto each instrument. The reason I like this EQ a lot is because it has a graphic analyzer, meaning it'll show you the actual frequency responses you're getting on um, you know, the channel that you got connected to. So, for example, you know, the bass is going to show a lot of highlights and the lower frequencies, you know, so on and so forth. So, um, let's start off with what I like to do. I like to balance out the, um, <coughs> the low frequencies, like, for example, the, uh, the 808 kick in this. In this sense, it would be the 808 kick. Um, that's actually, in this song, is one of the only low-end things, so what I'm probably going to do is, let's see here, you got the 808 kick, um, let me just go to the chorus, right, I'm going to find the chorus real quick, that's where everything is knocking at, there we go, alright, so, here's the 808 frequency right now, when I put it in, so it looks like right at about where the where the second one is, or number two is. That's where um, that's where it kind of mostly will probably stop as far as the bass frequencies. Um, usually when you have an 808 kick, you don't have a lot of highs in it, so I'll take down the highs out of the kick. So I'll you know, drop this this low pass filter here, grab the seven, just you know kind of cut out all the high spots. <laughs> Now, likewise, um, I'm gonna leave this up here. This is the 808 kick for, um, EQ right here. Let me bring up the snare. This is the this is the snare EQ right here. Uh, I guess I'll leave it right there. And I'm just gonna play. You'll see the snare show its frequency responses. Remember, that's the kick. This is the snare. <laughs> Now you see the snare, it's not really, it doesn't have a lot of lows in it, so it's not a lot of light showing there, so what you want to do to create space for the kick is to take out the lows from the snare. So now you, you see how there's like a balancing act going on right now, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Now, if I feel like the snare should be the brightest thing in the mix, then I probably will leave most of the highs in the snare there. You know what I'm saying? If I, if I feel like that's what, what should be rocking. But to me, I think what I want this track to be the brightest is definitely going to be the shakers and the cymbals. So I am going to cut out a little bit of the highs from the, from the snare. Just a little bit, nothing too crazy because I still want it to pop. Now that might be that might have been a little bit too much of a cut, but like I said, this is a balancing act. As you go along, you start balancing things out. So, like I said, I probably would want the cymbals and the shaker to be the uh, you know the brightest thing. So let me close this. I don't really need the kick drink there no more. I'm gonna bring up the snare. See what I do a lot? I bring up both like EQs because I like to compare. That's how I mix, so I, so I can see everything. See, that's the snare right there, this is the symbol right here. See, what I just did was I cut out all the lows from the symbols, because obviously we don't need it. Now, 
Sometimes when you leave an open end like this, it gets it gets it clashes a little bit, which I probably wouldn't end up doing by the end of mixing this track. But like I said, it we'll see what happens. You know what I'm saying? As you go, you do the balance in that. Now, something that you um that you, that you also do is sometimes you'll let me go into the snare, for example. <laughs> What you like to do, this is, a, this is the technique I'm going to go through real quick, it's called um, sweeping, it's like uh, EQ sweeping, basically you drag, you get one of these, um, you know, bells, um, I'll, you know, push it all the way up, you kind of, as it's playing, you swing it across, and you listen for good frequencies, like, you know, the, the tones that kind of sound cool, and you listen for the bad frequencies, the tones that don't sound good at all, and it's, let's say, like, right up, I was sweeping through, I found that the snare, Sounded weird as hell, like right around here. What is that? Like 649 hertz. What I would do if I didn't like that is I would do a small cut, a small drop in that frequency. You know, I'd go straight down and just drop it a little bit, you know? And if I like the frequency, say I like the snare hitting around how the snare sounded at um, 1763 hertz, I would do a boost there. I'd just do a little boost and leave it up. And then that's kind of how you would shape the snare in your mix or anything. That I love using the sweeping technique. I read about it. Read, um, I watched a lot of tutorial videos myself on YouTube, and it, it gives me the best results when it comes to mixing. So, if um, you have any more questions um, as far as EQ or you know any other of these plugins, um, leave it in the comments. Uh, definitely like, share, email me. Um, go to marpeace.com. You know, and get you some beats. All right, this is Marpeace Beats. I'm out. One.